Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm calling to order this meeting of the Council of the Town of Oakville, and I invite everyone to rise and join Council in Oak Canada. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. Madam Clerk, do we have any regrets? Yes, tonight we have regrets from Councillor Grant. Thank you. Councillor, are there any declarations of pecuniary interest? Madam Clerk, I see none. Council, how would you like to deal with your minutes? Are there corrections or are there uh, a mover and seconder? Councillor Duddick moves. Councillor O'Meara seconds for confirmation of the minutes. One more time for changes. All in favor? Opposed, if any, and the minutes are confirmed. We have no public presentations listed for this agenda, but we do have delegations. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you, I mean, we have two that I know of. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you call the first delegation? The first delegation is Elizabeth Kaplan, who's here to speak to item six of the Administrative Services Committee, Let's, uh, and she's representing Let's Rake. Ms. Kaplan, welcome. Yes, if you. you. If you speak um, six or eight inches away from the tip of the microphone, the people at home will be able to hear you. And Thank Council, you, Mayor looking Burton. forward to your information. Thank you very much for having me this evening, and good evening, all councillors and Honorable Mayor Burton. My name is Elizabeth Kaplan, and I am a home homeowner in Oakville for over 22 years now. I address you on behalf of our community group, Let's Rake, and on behalf of all residents of Oakville who moved here for its beauty, desirable location, and formerly quiet residential areas. I commend you now in an attitude of profound respect for all the tremendous ongoing organization and work required of all administrative departments of Oakville. It's sometimes a very thankless job, I am sure, and you, you're all very dedicated people, I know that. As I delivered an address to the Standing Committee members last Monday, June 20, and as Ms. Lynn Morgan and staff has kindly supplied each and every one of you with copies of my address and also other information in, in the packet I supplied to her, in the interest of saving time, I will not reiterate what are incontestable arguments um, challenging, um, excuse me, challenging Mr. Barry's report, the conclusion of which is unacceptable to us at Let's Break, and um, in our opinion should be dismissed by you. The negative impacts on our health and quality of life from the excessive unnecessary noise and pollution imposed on us all by operators of outdoor property maintenance equipment are detailed on our website, letsrake.com. There is a plethora of information and scientific data compiled from many reputable sources. Last year, Let's Rake members supplied Oakville Bylaw Services staff and councillors with extensive data concerning this public noise and extra pollution issue. I remind everybody present with your respect, with due respect, that so-called domestic tools under which leaf blowers are included in the present noise bylaw are 100% 
exempt from noise and pollution regulation. 100% exempt. They are free, other than don't use them at night after 9 o'clock when the light has failed. So this is under bylaw, of course, 2008-098, uh, in a section named exemptions. This bylaw vacuum needs to be rectified. It is a violation of residents' right to quiet inside and around their own homes to permit the daily bombardment of these crop dusters. You may not be aware that that's what leaf blowers are. They are unmuffled, often unfiltered, usually unfiltered, large acreage farm power tools which produce hurricane force wind speeds of 150 to 250 miles per hour. What are they doing in our residential neighborhoods other than keeping us from the needed serenity of our outdoor areas? Whoever makes the most noise outside and unnecessarily <coughs> disseminates clouds of extra pollution owns our atmosphere. Thankfully, Oakville Noise Bylaws provide some very good recent examples of moving in the direction of thoughtfulness and respectful neighborly harmony. Some noise issues, for example, pets, motorcycles, construction noise, have been segregated in the bylaws and have been individually dealt with via noise bylaw amendments. We gratefully applaud and heartily support these progressive measures. Our bylaw services manager, Mr. Jim Barry, stated to us in a meeting last summer when asked about bylaw amendments, quote, I get my direction from council. Councillors and Mayor Burton, Oakville residents now require your needed direction to bylaw services to draft an amendment to the noise and pollution bylaws regarding nuisance outdoor equipment. Leaf blowers are uniquely the worst offenders, hence our focus on them. Some relevant examples from recent amendments, and I quote, persistent noise from animals, prohibited at all times. Oakville has enacted a zero tolerance bylaw amendment re regarding dog barking yet allows leaf blower operators to freely and persistently blast residents' ears and brains for hours on end. No, uh, and I quote again from the bylaws, noise from construction is not permitted Sundays and statutory holidays. Even construction noise has a little bit of a break there for us on Sundays, one day a week and statutory holidays. There is an extraordinary red flag item in Mr. Barry's report, which, in our opinion, is a stunning example of a catch-22, and I quote, in 2015, four bylaw complaints were registered, all related to lawn mowers. No complaints were registered in 2014. Complaints about leaf blowers or other domestic tools operating during permitted times would not be retained. Therefore, no complaints about leaf blowers were or are retained because none would be, are, are registered, I'm sorry, because none would be retained anyway. No date time log is kept about the noise, pollution complaints, etc. So therefore, there are no complaints. That is not true. I know for a fact that is not true. This is absurd to an extreme. There is no logic in this policy and this approach to not keeping a log about complaints that come in because it's already <coughs> under the designated times allowed for leaf blowers. So there is a true catch-22 there in that anyone who calls up, it's not logged. So we don't really know about any complaints or not. Page three of this report is entitled, uh, page three, there is a, a section entitled Professional Landscape Feedback. And this is uh, Mr. Barry's uh, offered solution, and I quote, complaints 
from professional landscapers not using leaf blowers responsibly will be addressed through by Landscape Ontario. That's a private association. What does that have to do with bylaws and amendments and running a town, running a city, really, the size of Oakville, growing tremendously? And I quote again from Mr. Barry's report under professional landscape feedback, Landscape Ontario supports messaging about responsible use of equipment. Messaging, messaging on, you know, media sites, I suppose he means. And another item that Mr. Barry's report shows us is that Landscape Ontario has committed to developing a training video for leaf blowers, focusing on responsible use. And who will be viewing this video? Presumably it would be on a voluntary basis, I don't know. I searched today on Landscape Ontario's website and phoned about this video. There is no mention of it anywhere on their website and the person I spoke to had never heard of such a thing. So apparently it doesn't exist. Who decides what responsible use means in the context of a rapidly growing Oakville? It's administration or a private association. Needless to state, this noise pollution public bombardment from inappropriate outdoor equipment must be regulated under a Town of Oakville bylaw amendment. A possible name, and I'm borrowing a little bit, paraphrasing from one of the existing um, amendments that was done in the last few years, I guess. And I would call it persistent noise from outdoor equipment operators with a subheading of including hired workers and private individuals. Mr. Be <coughs> Excuse me. Mr. Barry clearly states here in his report that he intends to transfer the responsibility from Oak Oakville administrative staff onto a private association, Landscape Ontario, with an obviously biased interest in all outdoor property equipment. The more powerful, the better for whom? Whose interests? Not the residents of Oakville. If this isn't lobbying in the interests of others, please tell us what lobbying is. The report continues, and I quote again, Complaints about professional landscapers not using leaf blowers responsibly, which I mentioned a little earlier. We are again back to complaints not being logged because they are being operated daily during the permitted hours, 7 a.m. until 9 p.m. I have even heard and seen them being operated after 9 p.m. So during all our wonderful daylight hours, 14 hours a day, this is when they are free 365 days a year, and people actually use them for blowing snow, etc. They use them for the most preposterous reasons. Ms. Kaplan, yes. are you um, near the end? I am. Thank you. Mayor Burton. Um, so, on behalf of all residents of Oakville who want what you want to make Oakville Canada's most livable town, I thank you for your attention this evening to this community need. And trust that you will bravely enact the necessary bylaw amendment to uphold your motto. All residents are entitled to a peaceful lifestyle. Thank you very much. Thank you for your information. Are there questions for the delegate? Thank you very much for your information. Thank you. Madam Clerk, would you call the next delegation? The next delegation is Olga Shush sorry, Shushin. Uh, regarding item two on the Community Services Committee agenda, the cemetery bylaw. Ms. Shushan, welcome. Council looks forward to your information. Thank you. Uh, my name is Olga Shouchen, and I'm here to ask Council to approve the recommendation of the Community Services Committee to refer the proposed cemetery bylaws back to staff for more consideration. Thank you, Ms. Shushan. Are there questions of the delegate? Thank you very much. Thank you. Council, that brings us to the standing committee reports. I have no notice of anybody wanting a separation from community services. Is there a separation? And if not, is there a mover and seconder? 
Councillor Robinson is moving. Councillor Elgar is seconding. All in favor? The community services report is adopted as submitted. Uh, Councillor Hutchins would like to separate item 11 from the administrative, he'd like to speak to item 11 in the Administrative Services Committee report. Councillor Hutchins, you have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Mayor Burton. Um, I'd like to just get some clarification uh, for the residents on this. Uh, Joshua Creek Residents Association has written to us and asked about the memorandum of understanding between the town and the Lynn. Um, item one, they were worried that the wording uh, in the MOU asks about, uh, or doesn't make it clear that the community uh, uh, residents' uh, pool and, 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 and things are, are going to be built and are in the budget. And I'd like you to speak to that. And the other item is the second is at the Lynn, what sort of time frame this is all going to take. Uh, through you, Mayor Burton, on the uh, first issue, which is fully within the, the control uh, of the town of Oakville, uh, perhaps we, we as staff used a, a poor choice of words with the word envision. Uh, at uh, the moment, it is plan for an opening in 2020, as per our uh, uh, capital forecast. Uh, with respect to the second item, uh, the time frame that the Lynn would be looking to uh, undertake the additional health needs. Uh, that item obviously is fully within the control of the, uh, uh, the Lynn. Uh, staff do continue to work with the Lynn as well as the uh, Halton Region Health Unit uh, towards uh, moving along with that study. At this point in time, certainly, I couldn't advise you what that time frame. However, I would make that inquiry of the Lynn and uh, advise council. Thank you very much, Mr. Green. Um, You're Mike. Thank you very much, Mr. Green. Um, so, for clarity, the Community Recreation Centre is a done deal. It's, it's all, it's in the budget, it's going to be built. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. And for the second, the, uh, the timing, I believe uh, Mrs. Colleen Bell has been talking to the Lynn, if I understand, already on timing. Uh, Ms. Bell does so advise that there's not a timeline that has been established yet. Mr. Green, maybe for greater comfort for the public, you could indicate whether any um, uh, delay by the Lynn would delay us. Would it, would, if the Lind was slow to cooperate with you or in any other way didn't meet our timelines, will we delay things for them or will we motor on? Uh, given the size and magnitude of our undertaking, which is perhaps 95 plus percent of the project, we would fully move along. Thank you very much. And just to, uh, a little extra clarity there, it was in 2013 that Council approved that uh, rec center. So your residents uh, needn't worry. It is a fully approved and funded project. Councillor Elgar. Yeah, thank you. Just uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, how's the funding working for this uh, community center? Where is the money coming from? Um, it is a combination of um, uh, development charges, I believe in the order of about 50% which has been attributed to growth related, and then the balance would be through uh, uh, tax levy or dementia debt. But when the project was identified originally, it was identified partially as a growth related uh, project as well as um, serving the current community. For example, we're moving the pool from the uh, downtown area when that closes and putting the pool in at uh, the new rec center, which would be uh, fully at the town's expense. And what the dollar cost on the total project? I'm just curious. Probably. The capital budget has 25.1 million. That's what I was going to say. It's, it's just north of 20 million. Appreciate that. Thank you. All right. 
Are there any other changes or interest in the Administration Services Committee report? And if not, is there a movement seconder for the ASC report and the confidential report of the closed session of the Administrative Services Committee? Councilor Lischina and Councilor Lapworth, thank you. All in favor? Opposed, if any. That those committee reports are adopted. <coughs> Council, that brings us to our first and only discussion item, and that is the Oakville Enterprises Corporation Business Update, which you find in pages 45 to 48 of the agenda. We welcome to the podium Mr. Rob Lister, the President and CEO of Oakville Enterprises, and uh, we await your presentation. Good evening, Mayor Burton, Councillors. Thank you for the opportunity to make a presentation this evening on Oakville Enterprises and Oakville Hydro. With me this evening, Chair of the Board of Directors, Marie Oswald, Chair of our Finance and Audit Committee, John Mitchell, and I have executive staff members, Jim Collins, Scott Moody, Simon Abbott, and Mike Brown. I'm gonna start out with a summary as you do know, we rebranded Oakville Hydro Corporation, the parent of Oakville Hydro, in 2015 to Oakville Enterprises Corporation. Our competitive businesses extend across Ontario, putting us at over 900 employees working from Oakville, Markham, Toronto, London, St. Catharines, Fergus, North Bay, Kitchener, Hamilton, Windsor, Thunder Bay, and Wingham. In 2015, our revenues were just under $300 million. Our net income was just under $7 million. And our total payments to the town were $11 million. Jim will provide a bit more detail in a few minutes on the financials. I'd also like to highlight that Oakville Hydro was awarded the 2015 LDC Performance Excellence Award from the Electricity Distributors Association. Here I've identified our strategic themes. Continue to grow the company through organic means and acquisitions in the energy and infrastructure sectors. Diversify in a number of ways to manage risk through different business models, types of customers, staff skill sets and, and competencies, geography and service offerings. And finally, leverage operational synergies across the various businesses. These themes drive our strategic planning. And here's a uh, image of our strategic map with our vision to be our customer's most trusted provider of energy and infrastructure services, and our mission, inspired by innovation, delivering customer satisfying solutions. Our top priority is safety, sustainability is our guiding principle, and our strategic imperatives continue to be profit to increase shareholder value, service best in the eyes of our customers, people foster a culture of employee excellence, and reputation to enhance our brands. Our pride, priorities, and Council has seen these before, safety with no injuries, distribution system reliability and service delivery excellence, we strive to be top quartile performance, customer service above industry average and great customer feedback, sustainability of the business being strategically sound, and growth and profit tracking to our long-term objectives. On the safety front, safety for us is every day, all day, ensuring it is top of mind at work, at home, everywhere. We are fortunate to have accumulated 4.3 million hours of no lost time injuries over the last three years, an accomplishment that we are very proud of. Here's an overview of our businesses. We have four lines of business, electricity distribution, which is Oakville Hydro, infrastructure services, which consists of Alcon out of Oakville, PVS out of St. Catharines and Hamilton, GTEL out of London, UTS out of Ferguson and North Bay, and Planview out of Markham. Our energy services group, Oakville Hydro Energy Services, Golden Horseshoe Metering Systems, and Sandpiper Home Comfort. Our generation line, Sandpiper Energy Solutions, Sunny Shore Solar Park, and Sandpiper Geo Exchange. Here's a summary of Oakville Hydro, our electricity distribution line of business. We are the 12th largest LDC local distribution company in Ontario with 68,000 individuals, families, and businesses. 
Our growth rate is currently 2.7% per year in new customers. That's about 1,800 new customers a year. Our liability continues to exceed the averages. And the bar chart you'll see on the, the, on the right there is the year-to-date performance, and it's tracking for an annual average time without power of 17 minutes per customer. And that's, uh, that's a, an excellent uh, reliability level. Our customer satisfaction scores continue to exceed the provincial average, with this year's number being 90%. Infrastructure services, we just completed the acquisition of PlanView. This is a telecom engineering business out of Markham. Within this line of business, our service offerings include engineering, geospatial information system services, utility underground locates, pipeline leak detection, and distribution construction. On the generation front, here's some photos of our generation assets. We have the Sunny Shores uh, Solar Farm in Picton, the Cagoan Generating Station on Manitoulin Island, the methane plant at the region of Halton Landfill. We have three geo-exchange systems up and running in condominiums in Burlington and Ottawa, and our rooftop solar installations in the town of Oakville on town uh, facilities. The energy services, we have just under 23,000 home comfort customers. Golden Horseshoe Metering Systems works with a number of LDCs providing sweet metering services. And we provide billing services for the region's water and wastewater for Oakville customers. And my final slide, community continues to be a strong focus. Here's some photos of recent events with the middle photo of the check presentation earlier this month to the Oak Filter Fogger Memorial Hospital for, for $920,000 for their energy savings programs as part of the province's conservation and demand management incentives. So at this point, I'm gonna ask Jim to come forward and speak to our financial results for 2015. Jim? Thanks, Rob. Good evening, thank you, Rob. Um, I'll be very brief in this, uh, this part of the uh, presentation. Um, 2015, as Rob mentioned, is a year of growth for us. We've had revenues that have increased $36 million compared with the prior year. This has uh, resulted in our consolidated net income of increasing $1.2 million over the prior year, and our total assets have increased by over $21 million. With the payments to the town, as Rob mentioned, we've had $11 million in payments to the town in 2015. Over the, uh, since, 19, uh, since two th the year 2000, sorry, we've had $163 million that we've paid to the town in the form of interest payments, uh, dividends, lease payments, and uh, other services provided by the town. Going into a little more detail on the, uh, on the balance sheet, uh, as mentioned, the assets um, have increased by $21 million. The consolidated assets closed the year at $412 million compared to the prior year of $392 million. Statement of operations. The increase in the revenue has gone from $263 million to $299 million, an increase of the $36 million as mentioned. Net, inc uh, net income on a consolidated basis has gone from $5.7 million to 6.9 million for the end of 2015. And finally, a summary of our uh, consolidated cash flow statement. The cash balances have declined over the year. This is primarily due to an increase in our fixed assets and also the reduction in our, uh, our long-term debt. So with that, picture of our uh, sunny shore solar park, but I'd like to open up the presentation for any questions you may have for Rob and myself. Councillor Elgar. Thank you. Um, thanks for the presentation. Just very close to the beginning, you talked about growth through organic means. What are your organic means what in your business? How do you uh, one of the best examples would be we're a, a very large locate provider, so organic means would be additional new contracts with new municipalities or utilities or um, gas companies. So it's, it's increasing our customer base within our, uh, expanding our current service without actually acquiring uh, the, um, the business. 
I appreciate that because I'd never heard that before in the hydro side of the world. Councillor Lashina. Thank you, Jim. Uh, could you comment on the long-term debt? Uh, what time frame are we talking about and uh, what's the plan to retire it? The long-term debt goes from um, anywhere between uh, two years left in some of our acquisitions, uh, for example, PVS, and that is on a term loan that will be retired within a couple of years. It's, it's paid down monthly. And the longest one we have is, uh, is 30 years out. So it's for our Glen Orkey uh, station up in, uh, in Milton. So it is gain getting paid on a regular basis and it, uh, it gets paid out of the service revenue. So you don't have any concerns about actually paying down the debt? No, I don't. Thank you. Councillor Elgar. Uh, yeah, just on that uh, the Sunny Shore Solar Park that you're showing us here, how many acres does that cover? I'm going to say 142, but Scott? Okay, that, that's good enough ballpark. Yeah. Um, and just like yours, Councillor. How, how many years has it been operational so far, and what's the, is the contract in total 20? It was originally in a 20-year contract, and we're up about a year and a half now. Yes. So we still mm -hmm. have another 19, you know, 18, 18 19 and a half years. years yes. Mm -hmm. And it's functioning quite well and exceeding our uh, expectations. H how many megawatts? It's a 14 megawatt uh, capacity, the actual contract with the ISO is for 10 megawatt, but we overbuilt it in order to, to get capacity on the shoulder seasons and on, on the um, shoulder parts of the day, plus under cloudy conditions to maximize the 10 megawatt contract. So you're able to sell the 14 instead of the 10 to them? We can't sell more than 10, but with the excess capacity on a cloudy day, for example, if you just had a 10 megawatt capacity field on a cloudy day, you'd never get to 10 megawatts. So with a 14 megawatt field on a cloudy day, you can get to 10, 10 megawatts and, and get the maximum so revenue. So does it average out over, over time? I'm not sure it's a case of averaging, it's just sort of optimizing, find that balance between the cost of the infrastructure versus the optimization of the, of what I would call the shoulder times or the, or the cloudy times. And so it, it's, uh, um, so on, over time, yes, it, it averages out. Got it's, it. Uh, okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for the uh, report. Uh, Council, I wonder if I could draw your attention to the agenda and the four-part motion there and look for a mover and seconder. Councillor Knoll and Councillor Liz Chin are the mover and seconder. All those in favor? Opposed if any, and those are adopted. We have no discussion items or advisory committee minutes, but we do have um, uh, some new business. And uh, Mr. Green, do you have a new motion for me? So you have an amendment to the Council and Committee schedule moved by Councillor Duddick and seconded by Councillor Chisholm. And in discussion with uh, members of Council, the, this um, uh, change is uh, proposed. And uh, if everybody remembers Bob and Doug McKenzie, we just zoomed in. I, I'm not sure it's uh, going to be that clear, uh, but I'd be pleased to read it, that the Planning and Development Council meeting of July 11th, 2016, be rescheduled to July 25th, 2016 at 4 p.m., continuing at 7 p.m. for public hearings, uh, public uh, meeting items, and that the regularly scheduled council meeting of July 20, uh, 25th, 2016, commence at 8 p.m. Thank you. Is the mover and seconder still uh, satisfied with that? Councillor Duddick. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Thank CAO you. Green. Any discussion? Councillor Adams? Could you let us know what are the expected items on the P&D agenda, please? Uh, perhaps I could ask uh, Ms. Closey. She has been working on the agenda today. Uh, there is a, uh, a number of consent items. Uh, there's a, a bylaw to legalize a road, for example. There's about four or five committee of adjustment appeals that are confidential items. Uh, there is a report uh, related to the life science um, uh, proposal uh, near the hospital. Uh, there is a report on the committee of adjustment. And in total, there's about 14 reports that we expect to be bringing forward to that meeting. 
But those are all the major ones. So the major ones would be the Committee of Adjustment Review process and the hospital lands item. That's right. Thank you. And through your worship, I anticipate we would probably recess sometime 615, 630, um, have a dinner at that time, and then for the public hearings, rescheduled at 7 o'clock. That's fine. All right, I need a mover and seconder to waive procedure to deal with the notice of motion. Or do you have a question? Yes, I do, yeah. Councilor Elgar. Yes, yeah, sorry, I missed, when, um, uh, and I appreciate it. I'm glad uh, Mr. Green said the other hearing at 7 o'clock. Sorry, what, what, was, what did I miss there? Uh, there has been a public meeting that is scheduled for July 11th. Um, and so just to keep the time period similar, we could reconvene at uh, 7 p.m. Uh, so that members of the public could attend. Thanks very much. So, Councillor Elgar, is that you volunteering to move w the waiver of procedure? Sure. And I need a seconder. Still need a seconder. I saw a Councillor, somebody waved a hand at me. Councillor Giddings gave me more than a hand wave. All those in favor, opposed if any, that was <laughs> approval. Uh, in accordance with section 1.22 of the procedure bylaw, the rules of procedure established in section 6.12 be waived to permit consideration of the following notice of motion upon its introduction this evening, which the, the um, CAO has now read. All those in favor? Opposed, if any, and that too is carried. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Now, we also have before you a, proposed, a, a motion moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Lischina and um, you've, you've had that before you for some time. Uh, is there discussion of this? Councillor Lapworth. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yesterday afternoon, I received a knock on my door from a young lady who was um, soliciting funds for her school from Toronto. And um, I was wondering um, how we're going to um, notify all and sundry, you know, within a good radius of our homes here in Oakville to the effect of this uh, new rule and can we have a, a sign on our door for example advising them of the of the rule thank you so this is not a rule this is a motion expressing support for bill uh, for a, uh, a, a private members bill in the legislature that will bring a, um, a regulation and ban to door-to-door -door sales after that we may perhaps be entitled, depending on what the bill will say, to do things like you're asking for. Councillor Elgar. Yeah, I, I, I really like to appreciate and, and support this, but I'm just, hopefully we get more details. I really do like it when the girl guides come to sell their cookies at the door. <laughs> this is, <laughs> I gotta tell you. Councillor Elgar, this has nothing to do with girl guides. I believe you have a copy of the bill on your desk. All right, we're just going for the... All right, so we'll do that again. No, no, it will be an item on the next council meeting. Oh, very good. Councillor, unless you want to waive the procedure by law, all this is is your notification of it, and at the next council meeting, you will be able to vote or not vote on it. Is there a seconder for Councillor Elgar? Councillor Duddick seconds. All those in favor? Opposed, if any. The procedure bylaw is waived. Any further discussion on the uh, motion to support the bill? All in favor? Opposed, if any. And that carries. Thank you, Councillor Elgar. Now, we have a motion. I don't know. This is another notice of motion. And uh, we might want to let this one sit on the order paper till the next council meeting and that it's moved by Councillor Grant, who is, of course, unable to be here this evening. And uh, so we'll just leave that for the next meeting. Are there any regional reports or question periods regarding the town boards and advisory committee? Thank you. Are there any requests for reports? Thank you. Are there perhaps a mover and seconder for consideration and reading of the bylaws? Councillor Lischina and uh, Councillor O'Meara. All those in favor? Thank you. The bylaws are adopted. It's been great working with you. Thank you for your time and attention, and we are adjourned.